Hi guys and welcome to this latest video and today's topic is a little bit weird, it's touchy-feely topic. Now I will not do the review, I will not talk about any theory, I will not try to convince anybody about anything. As I said, I know it's really flammable topic. Personally, I do take care about cables in my system and um, I avoid talking about it completely because, you know, the, the one thing that I really hate is arguing with strangers on the internet. And I also know that just coming out and saying like, oh, this cable sounds better than this one and then describing sound differences, you would be like attacked immediately. But um, I felt this is a really convenient moment for me because um, I'm using like decent but budget-oriented hi-fi cables in my system. I don't... Uh, okay, we'll not talk about that. But a friend audiophile actually lent me a few of his cables just to try them out. And uh, I tried this one. It's called Atlas Hyper Integra, I think. Yeah, that's it. And it's, it costs about 200 bucks. Okay, now I know a lot of you just went like... <gasps> and um, I did not buy this. I'm just curious to try it out. And um, if I would compare my cable that's quite decent with this one, uh, there's no way I could record that. But I had an idea and I didn't have one at home. So I actually went and purchased the cheapest possible cable, it's two bucks cable. So two bucks against 200 bucks. What is the purpose of this one? Well, the purpose is to make contrast in the whole sound system so stark that I can actually record that with my 120 bucks Tascam recorder. And when I actually uh, compress all of that through the recorder, then through YouTube, and then through your own equipment that you're listening through with its own sound signature and its own cable that some differences will survive. So what is this video all about? It's about a demonstration. If you can hear any difference when everything in the system is completely the same. I use my Raspberry Pi as a streamer, Allo DG1 Speedif board, I feed my Denafreps RS2 DAC, and then in one case I use cheap cable to connect it to my integrated power amplifier Cyrus 8VS2 and then to Cath LS50s. In the other case, I just switch the interconnect cable and that's all. No volume change, nothing changed, the microphone exactly the same level at the exact same spot, which is my listening position in the height of uh, tweeter of LS50s and that's all. Now, because I know a lot of you would scream like bias if, if you immediately know which sound sample is from the cheap and which one is from the expensive cable. So they'll be marked as cable A and cable B. So please listen to this demo. It's of course not as near a good representation of what you hear in real life, but if you hear any difference at all, it comes from using a different interconnect cable and I just think it's a good food for thoughts. Now please take a listen. <laughs> Shot ice into my veins. I 
almost wish there were great Now we have more gas calls for me Does the sun go down on the road? That's it. Um, I don't know if you heard anything. Please, please feel free to post down below in the comments. I hope, I, I, I feel that when I listened to this video while editing, that the difference is, is big enough and noticeable enough that almost everybody should notice something. Oh yeah, and just, I forgot to mention that this one was cable A and this one was cable B. So, I don't know if that comes through the recording, but this one sounds muddier in the bass and it's a shrill sounding, very bright, very hissy sounding in the upper regions. Like singers, they go sh all the time. And the uh, soundstage is not that good. This one mu much more neutral, it has more dynamic, microdynamics too, and you hear just more of space, more of tone decay, reverbs, things like that. It's not a review, I will not go into details here. I, as I mentioned, it's just a food for thoughts. Sometimes in your system, if you're hearing like sibilant voices and you say like, oh yeah, Cafeles 50s are shit, they, they make things sound bright. Well, maybe not. Maybe something else in, in your system sounds bright and harsh. Just an idea. And I'm not saying like, oh, go out there and buy 200 bucks cables. I don't use these in my system day to day either. I just used these specific two cables because the difference between them was so stark that it survived, as I mentioned, all of the compressing layers, recording, YouTube, your own gear. If I used m my own cables, it would be much less of a difference and the point would not come across this good. And just a quick short story about this. Recently, a friend of mine told me that his stack topping L30, E30 arrived. And he said like, you were right. They do sound powerful. They do sound analytical and incisive, but I cannot stand for that excessive brightness and hissiness. And I said, wait, hissiness? Now I know they're brighter, I know they're a little bit analytical, but it's not hissy, that, that the thing, it, it, it's not. And um, yeah, he, he came to, to me and he listened to my stack and he said, your stack sounds better. And uh, he was quick to blame the Chinese and their quality control issues. And I said like, Take this cable, I lent him this cable, this is my cable. Take it home, 
listen to it. And he started to laugh and wanted to make fun out of me. And I said, like, because we know each other for quite a bit some time, like, don't annoy me, man. Take this cable, go home, attach it and tell me if you hear anything different, anything better, you treat me dinner. If you don't hear anything, I'll treat you dinner. And he took these, he went home, he hooked them up and he said like, oh my God, all of the hissiness and that annoying sharpness and some sort of splashy sounding symbols like disappeared. Now it just sounds more energetic, even more clean, but more juicy, more energetic. And the funny thing is these cables, they cost 10 bucks. I bought these on AliExpress, half a meter. It's uh, silver plated copper wires and it costs 10 bucks. And trust me, because I sometimes do spend more money, I have like five or six or eight times more expensive cables that I cannot notice the difference between these and those. 201 is even better, of course. Again, I didn't use this one and this one because the difference is not big enough to be easily observable through the YouTube videos. So I created the most stark contrast. And that's it. Now, don't worry. This is not the start of me reviewing expensive cables. It's just something that I felt uh, I want to share with some of you. If you have like a completely entry-level system it's okay to use freebie cables and not all sound the same too. This one is bright and harsh. I think the free cable that came with iFi Zen DAC, for example, that one sounded muffled. And yeah, like even free cables have different sound quality. They're usually at the same level, but they have different, a slightly different sound that you can differentiate. But if you're aspiring audiophile, if you spent like some decent or high amount of money on, on, on base gear components, like for example, I'm using LS50s. There were 1500 bucks when they released and amp that was 1700 bucks and DAC that is 750. And that piles up, you know. So what I'm honestly feeling when I see really nice components connected with cables like these, I feel sad. I really feel sad because I kid you not, you're limiting like 30% of your sound quality or sometimes maybe even more of what these things can do just by not believing that actually the, the path that signal goes through is important. And again, I'm not going to even start with theory of anything. I just want to say, don't believe all quasi-scientific guys that claim something boldly. Yeah, you can take some instruments and you can take few measures and you can see that those measures do not differ. Just like because you decided on a set of measurements that didn't show any difference, it doesn't mean that in reality there are no differences. And I hope that you actually heard that from this sound demo. Even if it's like you really cannot hear what I'm hearing in reality, I hope that you hear any difference. Because that would be like a really solid proof that cables do make a difference. And a lot of people actually, they have this whole thing upside down. If you cannot confirm with selected set of measurements that something is different, that's all it is. It means you cannot confirm with chosen set of measurements this, that those things sound different. But if you really connect these in, in your system that is good, you will hear that's just the reality is different. For God's sake, you can even hear it through this YouTube video. And that's why I wanted to, to share this small sound demo with you. But yeah, I will not go into this topic. I will not review any cables. If there is 
some interest, I can do another interesting thing, for example. Sometimes I could uh, get all cheap free cables everywhere in my system, like speakers, interconnect, digital cables, power cables. And I can record it like that. And then I can put all of my regular hi-fi cables back in and record that. And yeah, I think that that one would be really interesting, like cumulative effect of many different cables. This was just one. So that would be it for today, guys. I hope you liked it. As in all of my reviews about gear, I don't focus on technicalities, I don't focus on theory. I just wanted to show you that these do make a difference. And I hope that some of you that never considered that will maybe consider it. You don't have to start with expensive cables. Just try some that are a little bit better than this one. Like, like this one I mentioned. Give it a try. At least you will lose 10 bucks. And at best you might realize that your gear actually sounds much better than you knew. And that some annoying things like muddy bass or shrill vocals or sibilance were actually never a part of your main gear pieces. So yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time.